the system, three out of four defendants plead guilty. There's no trial, no jury. The prosecution's case is never tested. The police investigation never challenged. And yet trial by jury is a fundamental legal right protected in our constitution. Despite this, we have no idea when the guilty plea first dominated criminal case outcomes in Australian courts. And we don't know how or why this happened. These questions are the basis for my historical research investigating the guilty plea. Now for centuries, judges had been incredibly reluctant to accept defendants' guilty pleas. The jury trial was perceived to be a critical element of due process protection from persecution by the state. But something shifted during the 19th century and in English and American courts, the proportion of guilty pleas increased dramatically, eventually dominating criminal case outcomes by the 1920s. Now American scholars associate this transformation with the development of plea bargaining. They argue that the court system had become so complex and so expensive that administrators required an alternative to the jury trial. The bargained guilty plea was the perfect mechanism. The defendant gave up their right to trial in exchange for a reduction in the number or severity of their charges or a reduction in their sentence. But we don't know if this holds true in the Australian context. Only very recently have legal professionals here admitted to plea bargaining practices. My research tackles these issues through in-depth historical analysis of guilty pleas to serious criminal offences. With Supreme Court data, I can pinpoint when the guilty plea first dominated case outcomes. With historical documents like criminal case files and newspaper reports, I can identify the variation in the patterns of these pleas. But I want to extend my research beyond a plea bargaining framework to identify other factors influencing guilty pleas. I'm curious about police interrogation and the role of police corruption in illegal confessions. I'm curious about the shift to accountability and remorse on the part of defendants, saving their victims and witnesses further trauma on the stand. And I'm curious about legal representation and the effects this may have had on defendants' pleas. Today, the guilty plea is a critical mechanism of our prosecution process and Australian legislators seem intent on increasing their numbers. Yet some of their American counterparts are calling for reform, openly critical of a process they claim aggressively coerces guilty pleas from defendants who would otherwise be innocent. Whether we follow the same path remains to be seen, but in order to know where we're going, we need to know how we got here in the first place. Thank you.